Hello everyone and welcome to the ATEC channel. As most of our subscribers know, we're always coming up with new topics. That's why we're going to transport you to the world of technology again. Together, we're going to learn about the rather unusual nuclear reactor. Nuclear power produces carbon-free electricity. The United States has been using it for decades to generate electricity. However, this clean energy carries a dreaded stigma. After the disasters of Chernobyl and at Fukushima, the public is well aware of the dangers of nuclear power. Moreover, the cost of nuclear production is rising. This is the contrast to the falling cost of alternative forms of energy, and references made to the solar and wind power, which are gaining in popularity. It may not ring a bell, but thorium could change nuclear power forever. Thorium is China's answer to the global energy problem. They believe it can be an alternative to uranium for future nuclear reactors, but why do you think so? Well, Ethereum is recognized as a pure and clean source of energy. Scientists estimate that there is four times the amount of it in the world than uranium. This can make it a safe and abundant source of energy, but why would it change the field of nuclear energy? Let's first discover the story behind this fascinating element. Thorium was discovered in 1929 by a Swedish chemist named John Jacob Barzelis. He named it after the Norse mythology god Thor. Doesn't this name sound familiar to you? Yes, it's the god of thunder, lightning, and storms that we know from science fiction movies. According to legend, his symbols valor, strength, agility, and victory. But thorium has remained virtually unused for many years. The material only found its use when incandescent mantles were invented in 1885. Combined with serum oxide, it was used to increase the brightness of these traditional lamps. But their market collapsed at the end of World War I, and thorium was once again of no interest. In 1898, the physicist Mary Curie discovered the radioactivity of thorium. Between 1990 and 1903, the chemists Ruther Ford and Frederick Soddy demonstrated that its decay followed an exponential decay law. They found that once it decays, the material induces a series of several other chemical elements. Moreover, uranium is one of them. As a reminder, uranium is the material widely used today to fuel nuclear reactors. But its history does not end there. In 1925, chemists found a way to produce high-purity metallic thorium through a process called the melted zone method. Since then, thorium has been a great interest to science. Thus, the material has landed in several fields. In metallurgy, thorium is used in alloy agent for steel. It is also used to manufacture cathodes and electrodes. In glass making, thorium oxide is used to design quality lenses for our cameras and laboratory instruments such as microscopes. In the 1930s and 40s, scientists used it to absorb x-rays in radiology. Unfortunately, this use was abandoned. It turns out that the material in question is carcinogenic in the long term. But, why does China really want a thorium reactor? The integration of thorium in nuclear reactors has been studied for many years, but it remains without proven results given the profitability of power plants that already operate with this material. Unlike uranium, thorium is not a fissile element. That is, it can only produce energy when associated with fissile element. This can be enriched uranium or plutonium. Scientists believe that the only technology that can be promising for its use of thorium is the one with molten salts. Namely, a molten salt nuclear reactor uses fissile fuels that can be plutonium, uranium-235, uranium-233. These are elements resulting from the conversations of thorium. This reactor would be profitable in medium term. In fact, it is among the technologies of the future of the Generation 4 internal forum, states one of the publications. But unfortunately, it's only uranium version. Thorium has not been projected, nor any other fuel requiring a particle gas pedal. But this does not prevent or some organizations from launching an ambitious project around this material. As we speak, China has already conducted its first molten salt reactor test, which has proven almost successful. The technology was used in the city of Wuwei. It turns out that the prototype was able to provide energy of about 1,000 homes. According to China, this innovative reactor could help meet its energy goals for all according to the plan. The Chinese authorities are planning to create a nuclear power plant that will use thorium as main fuel. According to them, this plant could be able to supply energy needs for at least 100,000 homes. This would be a real advance in the nuclear industry. But thorium is not only coveted for its abundance or performance as a nuclear fuel. It is also a material that could slow down the current climate change. Indeed, a large part of the environmental waste comes from nuclear power plants. This is especially true to the storage of nuclear waste, which lasts hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. 
It turns out that thorium reactors produce less proliferation and less radioactive than uranium reactors. Moreover, the waste production in molten salt reactors can be easily incinerated or recycled. But that's not all. Thorium could also help us fight out the proliferation of nuclear weapons. Unlike uranium, it limits the production of plutonium. For the record, this is the key element in nuclear weapons. It could be a real alternative for uranium. Thorium reactors are still a very different way to produce electricity, but it could benefit the world. They are more efficient than their fossil fuel counterparts. These reactors are also safer than a conventional nuclear power plant. By generating zero carbon emissions, it is a viable solution for the future of the world's energy needs. However, the public stigma of nuclear power is real and plays a large role in the development of thoranium. It must be overcome before legislators act. If funds are to be allocated to research, more people would be convinced first. Without public and scientific support, it'll be difficult to move forward with this technology. Education is probably useful to help move the thorium agenda forward. For example, discriminating information about thorium-based reactors and educating the public about their safety. Even with all these advantages, thorium is still unavailable to most countries today. Although it can be used in our current reactors, it remains useless. Indeed, we will remain the same waste and same exposure to hazards. Though the only one that can make the use of this material profitable is the molten salt reactor. But scientists are very hesitant about this because of its relatively expensive and complex manufacturing. Although research on thorium has taken place in several countries, only India and China are actively pursuing it. They have formulated their intention to use it in the near future. India, for example, predicts that by 2050, it could produce up to 30% of its energy needs. But why such a reluctance to use such a clean technology? Part of the reason is that traditional nuclear technologies are still functional. As a result, they are much cheaper. Thorium reactors have a higher fuel fabrication cost. Also, there are no infrastructure in place yet to support thorium technologies. This implies a cost to start up and implement administrative oversight on this technology. Do you think the public should encourage the use of thorium in nuclear power generation? Tell us what you think in the comments. That's it folks, we're coming to the end of our video. If you like today's topic, leave us a little comment. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and activate that notification to stay up to date with our topics. A little click on that blue thumb will also make us very happy. See you soon for another topic on ATAG.